and usually in the uh, precious metals bull market, silver outperformed gold. So that hasn't even started yet. And, and that's why I think we are on the cusp uh, of a major breakout in silver relative to gold and relative to the, the fiat currencies as well, of course. Uh, yeah, and patience is the name of the game in precious metals because the higher these precious metals go, uh, the more uh, people are going to wake up to the fact that our monetary architecture, our currency system is rotten. Monday, September 16th, 2024, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. We're going to talk about silver today. It's probably my favorite metal. Yes, we do cover gold a lot, but... Uh, Silver is really a, an amazing metal. It has been used as money for thousands of years, and it's been used in, well, most, uh, or if, if not every culture on the planet as money up until very recently, up until the 70s, some European countries were using silver coinage. And uh, yes, we're going to go over how I started buying silver, but we're also going to cover today the fact that silver, the silver price, looks like it's about to break out and uh, that maybe the bullion banks uh, that uh, operate out of London and New York could be in trouble. Uh, there are some signs that uh, things are, are getting uh quite interesting in, in terms of the supply and demand. We, we know that the Indians, for example, have been buying a, a lot of physical silver this year. And uh, I'm going to quickly look at uh, an article here by David Jansen, who I'm trying to get on the channel because he's done a lot of research about the LBMA and how uh, the bullion banks and the Bank of England, under the leadership of the Bank of England, really control control the price of gold and silver. So uh, we're going to do that today. We're going to start first with my uh, journey with silver. And then we'll look at um, the technical picture and quickly go through this article by David Jensen. In 2003, I started buying gold probably a, a year before, in 2002, I, I bought some Krugerrands. We, uh, my wife and I discussed at the time on ways to try to uh, diversify uh, away from the stock market, especially after the dot-com dot -com bubble burst. And I was very fortunate because I happened to buy right when uh, gold was very near the bottom. Uh, of the last 25 or 30 years, it was around $320 or around 220 pounds. Um, and uh, when I bought my first Krugerrands, when you hold it, it's really a special. So you need to buy and hold it to really, you know, realize how special gold is. And it led me to uh, down the rabbit hole uh, of trying to learn about gold and silver and the monetary system and that's what i've been doing ever since and uh, at the time of course i was working in the city of london as a futures and options broker for government bonds and uh, interest rates uh, contracts like the euro dollar which have been replaced by the the software contracts all these kinds of financial uh, instruments or derivatives and then uh, a year later i uh, i went on to buy silver as well and i bought a, a kilo bar which i still have and uh my journey in silver be began with a kilo bar because that's uh what i learned that that was the best way uh to really uh, invest in physical silver um, at the time, I, I don't think uh, the Britannia one ounce silver coins were that popular or I'm not even sure they were minting it at the time. But then you, you, you uh, do your research and you start buying other stuff. And, and what I'm going to do today 
is try to help you so you don't have to take years to learn about this. And I'll just give you my uh, uh, the process uh, in a few minutes. That took me a few years to to kind of get into or how how it evolved. So I've got here a, a 50 uh, ounce, 50 troy ounce bar. It's an angle hard. So my kilo bar is uh, a little less weight than this because it's about 31 ounces. So this is quite, yeah, 50 ounces. You multiply about it by around $30, gives you uh, $1,500. Uh, at the time when I bought uh, silver, I think it was less than, uh, wow, it, it was trading at around 4 or $5. So yes, the price has gone up. Uh, it does uh, feel like it's frustrating right now, but I, I think uh, we're gonna cover this in a minute, but let's keep going with the uh, with how I started. And the other thing I did, well, at the time they didn't have ETFs, but uh, I wouldn't have bought ETFs. I wanted to buy the real thing. And I've been telling people that ever since I started the channel, and even uh, friends, family, and colleagues before that, that you need to buy the physical because I learned very quickly that the bullion banks uh, manipulate the price. And the way they do that is by keeping you in these paper instruments and, that, and that's what they want. Uh, they don't want you buying the real thing. So another, uh, so this is really bullion, right? It's the value of silver. It's very, uh, yeah, it's not very, uh, it's not a coin. It's, you, you probably pay a lesser premium for it. It's just a bar. Uh, and then you have bullion coins. <laughs> and I've got one here that's 10 ounces. And it's a beautiful one, a kookaburra from the Perth Mint. So that kind of stuff. And then there are the, uh, the normal uh, one ounce uh, silver coins that have been minted, that are minted now. And uh, these are usually 999, so they're pure silver. They're not circulating co coins. They're, they are the equivalent of this, but in coins, bullion. Uh, so this is uh, the Gold Eagle. Uh, and they, they usually come in these. Uh, these are good for if you are in the States. I am in the UK, but I still like these. Yes, there is no capital gains tax in the UK if you buy uh, Britannias, which are coins of the realm, uh, one ounce. And so why do I have American ones? Well, because I like them and uh, you can still barter with it. If you don't sell it for fiat, there won't be capital gains tax. And that it, I think uh, a lot of people worry too much about the taxes, but you, you need to find ways uh, around it, not uh, avoid it. But uh, for example, sell it in drips and drabs if you're going to sell it. Um, so we've gone through uh, bullion coins. Uh, the other uh, way to buy silver is through jewelry, if you're into that. Um, I'm not really into jewelry. My wife likes uh, silver jewelry. She's got some, not that much, but uh, there's also things like, um, like this. <laughs> what is this? Well, it's a sovereign, sterling silver sovereign case. Uh, so in the old days when gold was used as money, sovereigns, and silver as well for that matter you had these little cases where you could put a chain here and uh, you put the, the sovereigns in here so I like this kind of stuff as well it's more like an antique it's gonna cost a lot more than the the silver weight but uh, it's one of the reasons why I think silver is such a great metal uh, aside from being money it's jewelry and it's also very important uh, in uh, industry and is becoming more and more important, of course. And then uh, there are the coins that I, I really like. Um, these are the uh, old coins that circulated. 
um, well, up until the, the mid 60s, some, some places up until the early 70s, I think like Germany and Austria. But so we've got a, a dollar, a silver dollar here. This is from 1881. I have quite quite a bit of these. These, if you want to, in the US, this is called constitutional or junk silver pre-65. Uh, I've got the UK uh, ones as well. Uh, they were sterling or 925 prior to 1920. And what's so interesting about 1920, well, it was just after World War I. So wars usually bankrupt countries uh, after 1919 and 1920. Uh, this became just half silver. But this one is from, let's have a look at the date. Take my glasses off. This is 1918. So this is like uh, almost the last year where it was sterling silver. The American coins, they are 0.90. This is 0.925. And why are they not pure silver? Well, because pure silver, like pure gold, is very sensitive. So if you're uh, uh, paying and uh, using this as currency, uh, you need it to be toughened by some other alloys. Um, and I've got here, for example, someone sent me this. One of you guys sent me this. You probably know if you're watching. It's a five franc, uh, Belgian franc silver coin from 1873. Uh, it's got, uh, what's his name? Leopold II, uh, Roi de Belge, King of the Belgians, you can see here. Uh, yeah, and, and I've got many others <laughs> from many other different nations and the empires, like uh, Brazilian silver coins from the 19th century when Brazil was an empire. And that's the other interesting thing about silver coins is that you learn uh, about uh, history. Yeah, and some of these, for example, you might pay a premium. Uh, it depends on the condition. This is just, uh, this is, I don't think, rare. And I'm going to come to the numismatic coins in a minute because over the years, I've gone from just buying a plain old bar and then uh, to buying uh, bullion coins, to buying uh, junk or constitutional, and then to buying uh, numismatic, uh, which you need to be do more research on. I, I don't recommend you start out with numismatic start out with the bullion um, and uh, yes because the numismatic is not something that you buy to uh, yeah that I, I'm gonna sell when the silver price goes to $50 for example it's something that I will hold uh, for as long as I'm on the planet and hopefully leave it to my family so I'll give you an example of numismatics uh, I've got a, a shilling here from 1787. It's a George III shilling. And uh, a shilling is like a, similar to a quarter, I would say. So there you go. I, I paid a, a f well, I can tell you actually, I'm not going to, I paid 200 pounds for this 1787 shilling. So that's completely different. But it's one of the reasons why I, I uh, think silver is a great metal as well. Um, and then if you want to go back further in history, I bought this, I think, last year at CoinEx, which is a coin exposition in London. I, I think uh, it's going to be uh, quite soon, uh, CoinEx. Uh, it's towards the end of September. I'm not sure if I'll go this year, but uh, this is a, a silver penny long cross type Ethelred II <laughs> so it's from uh, he he was king of the Anglo-Saxons king of England from nine, 978 AD to 1016 so there you go um, that's numismatic that's silver so what else have we got here? No, I've just got some more numismatic ones. Uh, I've got a, a shilling from 1893, and you can see it's in pretty uh, good condition. I, I like the uh, old English coins, uh, not just buying it as junk, but also as numismatic. I think uh, they're great. 
So many of you, of course, might not and do what I've done over the years. You just want to buy the bullion and that's fine. What about the miners? Well, miners are a different animal. They're very highly speculative. Uh, you are buying kind of access to silver indirectly, but you also uh, buying into a company and uh, there's a lot of variables uh, in owning a company. You have to look at uh, the geographical uh, location, the geopolitical risks, political risks, uh, labor, <laughs> labor risks of strikes, confiscation by, by governments, right? Mexico and things like that. You got to look at the management, how competent they are. There's all these different factors, but it's, uh, that as well is something that I evolved in my, uh, investment or purchasing of silver. It was only, uh, two or three years after I got into gold and silver that I started looking at the mining companies. And I'm not saying you should take that long to do it now, but uh, it's a good way to get exposure to, to, uh, to silver, the silver miners. And uh, where do you find uh, the companies that you need to maybe get exposure to? Well, go into the silver ETFs, look at their uh, prospectus and their holdings and uh, try to mimic it. That's what I did. Um, you just use your uh, common sense. Uh, SILVJ, I think that's uh, uh, one that uh, uh, is a silver ETF. Or you can even look in GDX and GDXJ. There are silver companies there too. So um, now let's talk about this uh, article here quickly really i'm going to put a link to it in the description and it's a sub stack of uh, david jensen I, I recommend you subscribe to it um and he wrote this on september 11th so quite recent quite recent uh article and it says london float of vaulted silver drawn drawn down by 8.1 percent in august 2024 so he's noting how uh, LBMA, they, uh, they vault silver for ETFs and silver for in the vaults for un unencumbered silver by ETF. And that uh, it dropped quite a bit uh, in August. And if it continues to drop as it did in August, uh, we could have problems in the silver market. So uh, and looking at the chart here of silver, and the fact that we're testing 31 today, uh, it looks quite interesting. And um, I think this chart, uh, so we're looking at technicals now, uh, chart looks very interesting at one key level uh, above is going to be 31.75. And then uh, the really big level is going to be 32.50, which was uh, the high earlier this year. I think once we break out of that level, Things will be explosive, and I think silver will will uh, wake up from its slumber, and people are going to start looking at silver because it, it's still uh, heavily underperforming gold. And usually in the uh, precious metals bull market, silver outperforms gold, so that hasn't even started yet. And, and that's why I think we are on the cusp uh, of a major breakout in silver relative to gold and relative to the the fiat currencies as well of course uh yeah and patience is the name of the game in precious metals because the higher these precious metals go uh the more uh people are going to wake up to the fact that our monetary architecture our currency system is rotten <laughs> and uh and that's why the bankers and the central bank uh, try to uh, control the price so much because it, it, it's uh, yeah it's an indicator it, it, it's like a canary in the coal mine or it's like a barometer right it's a barometer uh, of monetary ineptitude you and I uh, or a, a lot of you who've been following me for years know that uh, the central bankers uh, all they can do is create currency or funny money out of thin air and that the system is not fit for purpose. But the majority of people out there 
don't know anything about this. And uh, that's why they, they want to keep people away from the metals because the metals give you independence from the central banks. So I think Asia was fairly quiet today. I think Japan and China were on holidays. But one thing I'm noticing here with the Fed uh, meeting uh, uh, approaching uh, on Wednesday and uh, the talk now is whether they're going to cut by 25 or 50. Uh, I, I see that the dollar is continuing to drop quite sharply versus the yen, even though uh, Japan is closed. The, these markets trade, they trade internationally. So we've dropped below 140, uh, the dollar has versus the yen. So I think things could get quite interesting this week. If we see the dollar drop very sharply prior to the Fed announcement, it might uh, push the Fed to only do 25. So it's going to be very uh, important to keep an eye on this. What about gold and silver? What are they doing this morning? Well, the high in gold is 2590. Uh, just uh, yeah, just below 25.90. Right now we're at 25.83, up about five bucks. Silver, the high is 31.11. Right now we're at 30.92, or up 20 cents. And uh, what time is it right now? Because it's important to know what time it is and where I am. I'm in London and it's 8:04 a.m. So it's around 3 a.m. Eastern time in the U.S. Uh, what about the futures uh, market for the stock market indices? Well, they're down slightly and nothing to write home about. So there you go. Uh, with that, I'm going to wish you all a, a very good day and a great start to the week as well. Take care. Bye.